let me uh, let me ask you if plastics are such a small percentage of the problem. Why are we focusing so much effort on it? Why is the United Nations spending so much time on plastics when it sounds like from your statistics that the majority of litter issues are not plastic? They're other materials. Right. It's a great question. I call it the great plastics distraction. That's the name of my talk. You can look it up on YouTube and you can see all the data. And the thing is, it's one word against another one, right? But when I say something, it's always backed by peer-reviewed study after peer-reviewed study. So plastics are less than 1% of waste and litter and harm and so forth. Well, I'm not sure about litter, but less than 1% of waste and materials and overall harm. And so why? And the same with the ocean plastic. So why are we fo focused on these things and ignoring everything else? It's In essence, it's a political question. And I'm a scientist, right? I just look at what's true and what isn't true. I don't have any political party. But if I were to take a guess, um, I would first say that what the UN is telling us is not the truth. When I compare what they say, there are examples on my website where they say there'll be more plastic than fish in the sea by 2050. Science says that's absolute nonsense. In fact, the scientists that they quoted say that it's nonsense. Um, so that's one thing. The things that they're saying do not stack up and compare well with the, with the scientific data. And then what is their motivation? That's hard to know, isn't it? But one thing is that it's a distraction um, from real issues. I mean, we have real issues in the world, right? We have starving people. We have poor people. We have uh, world hunger. We have all kinds of things that we should really be looking at. And this whole plastics distraction is a way, I think, for rich people to feel good about themselves. It's a way for us not to think about the starving people and how lucky we are. It's a way to um, to go around and wave our cotton bags or, or s sip out of our paper straw and feel like an angel when, in fact, what we should be spending this money on and all this time is helping the poor people something that would really matter. And the things, uh, they've done studies on this too, right? So why do people care about bags so much? So they did a study on that and people think that the number one thing they could do for the environment is to reduce their use of bags and so forth. Science says it would make no difference. Bag straws doesn't make any difference whatsoever or PET bottles. What makes a difference is flying less, driving less and eating less meat. And the trouble with those things is that nobody wants to do them because that's an actual sacrifice. So this whole plastics detraction is a way for us to not make any sacrifice that would actually help and yet still feel good about ourselves. My goodness, isn't that interesting? So essentially, we're talking about a paper, we're tending to a paper cut on our finger. Uh, but yes. Meanwhile, we're bleeding uh, from a bullet wound to our chest. Uh, the triage That's exactly is it. offside there. Chris, uh, recently, I don't know if you know, but um, uh, the uh, courts uh, ruled that the federal government in Canada uh, uh, who labeled plastics toxic were not right to do so. They said that that was unreasonable, it was unscientific, and it was unconstitutional. Yes. So even the legal system has ruled against our government uh, in this sphere. Um, would you agree with courts or disagree? Oh, I agree. I, I actually looked into this. So you can't just declare things, right, and make them true. We're not living in la-la land with uh, fairies and pixies and uh, people who can just declare things as true. And it reminded me of the story of King Canute. He was a famous king who went out to the shore and said, I command the tide to stop, right? And, I, and, you know, and the water can't come in. It can't touch me or my shoes or my robes. And guess what? It didn't work because he declared something. He ordered something. But reality carries on, irrespective of what nonsense people declare. And... The subject of toxicity, that's not subjective, right? This has got 50 years of testing behind it. These materials are FDA approved to go in our mouths, right? As far, knives and forks and straws and so forth. And there's been thousands and thousands of studies done. You can't just erase that because some weird woke politician decides one, one day that he's, had a, he's in a grumpy mood and he's going to declare something toxic. And so what I did was I put together the toxicity data for plastic and it's as safe as it's safer than table salt. Let's put it that way. If you if you rank how safe something is and that means how much can you eat before you get sick, right? This has been done and there are numbers for these things and plastics are in the absolute safest category. And then, of course, people will say to me, well, what about the additives? Aren't they coming out of the plastic? That's something people worry about. And the answer is no, they, they've been tested and they're safe as well. They're as safe as the plastics are. So all this testing has been done for 50 years. We have all the data. And to just declare it invalid because somebody's got a weird agenda is um, not scientifically correct and it's not good for the planet either. So it sounds like uh, maybe the United Nations should uh, uh, invest in some scientists who actually evaluate some studies. Let's hold that thought. We'll bring it right back after the break. <laughs> 